Coming up, we just saw Rogue One, a Star Wars story, and we're going to tell you what we thought in this episode of Diz Pop. Diz Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Be sure to visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and as you can see, I've got some guests here with me, the one and only Pete Werner. Charles, I don't know your last name. Doesn't matter. We found him at the movies. We brought him along with us, and we've got Stephen Elizabeth Porter Hi, here. As you can see, we're not in the studio. We are in the Artagon Mall uh, down off of I Drive, one of my favorite places, the Cinemark Movie Theater behind us here. Um, and this was everyone's first experience at this theater except for me? No, nope. yeah. I, yeah, I have yeah. been. Oh, you've been here before? Yeah, during my college program. Oh, okay. Well, so it was a little different now this because, was a, I, you know, I can tell you, this was a really nice theater. Well, let's say how we, how did we experience the movie? Um, I rented out the theater. Yeah. For us and about, I don't know, about 50 of my friends. Yeah. And so it was really cool. We had a, we had a really nice fun time with yeah. all our friends and a nice, the rest of the team. It was like and, uh, 60 seats or so in a theater. We had one of the small, on the smaller sides, which made it really cool, really personal. And all the seats had, were recliners. Yeah. And sound and yeah. uh, screen quality was awesome. Oh, it was excellent. Yeah. I was really impressed with this place. Um, out of my own paranoia, I'm going to pick this up and just hold it. Um, so we... Um, the, the staff here was wonderful. The woman came in, and this is one of my fears in a movie theater. When you get a full movie theater, people get uh, sweaty. And so she said, is the temperature okay? And I said, you go ahead, drop that down as low as you want, because we're, gonna, we're, we're, a, we're a hot group in here. <laughs> I said it. But okay, so enough of that. Let's talk about the movie. Um, I just want to run through the plot really quick. If you don't know and you've been living under a rock, the movie, this takes place between episode three and episode four. The movie leads right up to the opening of episode four, A New Hope. And it's all about the Rebel Alliance and how they stole the Death Star plans that helped Luke and company eventually, spoiler alert, And I think just destroy. for everybody, episode four was the first one that was released back in the 70s. Yeah. So... I know a lot of people get confused. Episode four was that one of the new ones that George Lucas did? No, this this was one. This was this is the prequel to the original. Yeah, and it, you know, and and we'll get into that in a, in a second too about uh, how it kind of a lot of work went into this movie to make it like that. So I, I definitely want to pay attention to that. So just I don't think we need to necessarily go too far into depth. I just want to say a th few things about plot. It's it, it doesn't start with the scroll like a normal Star Wars movie, which is fine. They said their side stories aren't going to do that. I don't know well, how you guys felt about it. Yeah, they definitely differentiated with the music, with some of those elements like the scroll in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, kind of making it feel like it was its own. Yeah, I was actually really nervous because in the very beginning of the film, they're going through a, like a, a Saturn-like planet that has rings around it. And I thought they were doing a cheesy thing where we were seeing the underside of a scroll, like one of the, you know. Uh, what I mean? Yeah, well, I thought I thought that was weird too because the ring at first I was like, oh, what's this? Is this like? Did somebody forget to insert special effects? Like yeah. it, it looked a little blotty, but it was good. I, I liked how they set it up because they started with a flashback that set up the main antagonist of the movie um, or protagonist, excuse me. Uh, Jin Urso and her father and their story is like the weight of this story and they started with a flashback which then cut to the title and then we cut to where we are in, the, in this film and I thought that if the other movies do it at, in a similar fashion it, it'll, it's, it'll be successful. Well one of the things with keeping it its own story because it's a prequel um, in the way that it happens before episode 4 mm -hmm. but the standalone aspect that they really worked hard to accomplish I think is important not doing that scroll because yeah. we're all waiting for it. Yeah. I was. You just inherently, you're waiting for that scroll to pop off. And it doesn't. And for a second, I felt like something's wrong. It was a little jarring. And then I yeah. remembered, there's no backstory. There's no scroll. This is not so much a, this is how episode four happens. This is a, this is the story of Rogue One. These are new characters. These are the stories of these new characters mm -hmm. and their mission and how they go about it and you know achieve whatever dramatic purpose that they yeah. have. Instead of, this is a movie to you know, backwards set up other movies you've already seen. Because yeah. well, that's where it gets boring. And also the uh, the uh, uh, the backstory doesn't need to be told in a scroll because we already know it. True. And it it uh, it kind of unf unfolds and unveils itself 
at varying points throughout the movie, which I thought was brilliantly done. Yeah, that's a really good point because we've had scrolls for the three movie, three movies before this, the four movies after this. So you're like, okay, well, we know we know where everything is, mm -hmm. but we this is like the underlying. Though this is. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, we've said we've said what we're well, about the that. Thing is, sorry, yeah, I'm excited. Eight, eight, yeah. eight and nine will have them. Yeah, um, because they're official episodes. Yeah. yeah, this is not an episode. It's a one-off. So yeah, it's yeah. a one-off. One-offs don't get the scroll, which I am completely the, happy with. And here's the thing: as a one-off, I thought it was better than Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. I loved Force Awakens, but I got to be honest: I thought this was so well done. Yeah, I. In, Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Well, let's talk about that for a second because um, this movie, for those of you who maybe I know, like Kathy, only just got into Star Wars with The Force Awakens, and she said she enjoyed this one. She didn't like it as much as Force Awakens. There, it's apples and oranges, and I, I love that they were able to do that. And it, it, it gives me a lot of hope for what's to come with the spinoffs because it's it felt so different but in a in a positive way that you know this is supposed to all be like a war movie because it is you know it's they're going in the trenches and it's you know re rebellion against an empire and it, 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 so it not only visually looks different but it emotionally feels different it sounds different but at the same time it fits in star wars because it is in that same look and vein as, yeah. as episode four. It, it almost, to me, if you've ever played the uh, Star Wars Battlefront yeah. games, it almost feels like a, a, yeah. mo like a true a movie. Yeah, yeah a true movie version of the game. Yeah. I, I hope they make a game version of this. Uh, I believe there is downloadable content coming that will have um, the, some of this from that yeah, in there. Cool. But cool. Downloadable content into Battlefront? Yes. Yeah. E either that or they were saying it's in the next version of the game, but I did read something about that recently. I just, I only glanced at the article really quick um so i want to say uh, a little bit about the people in this movie because a lot of these characters we've never met before in the universe um the main character um jen urso urso jen urso yeah, jen urso, urso, urso. So her she's played by um felicity uh jones who you know uh if you haven't seen the theory of everything she was stephen hawking's wife and that she's excellent she's in every movie that's coming out all of a sudden everywhere i thought she was excellent mm -hmm. as the main character yeah. her, her father played by mads michelson um if you've seen hannibal he's excellent as hannibal uh he's uh the main villain in um dr strange so disney loves him now uh he's great i, I thought ben um oh my gosh his name ben the, the main guy in the white robes, uh, uh, his name is like Ben Middleson, Middleson, Michael, I don't know. But he's from, he, he was in The Dark Knight Rises too. You, you've recognized him. He's a character actor. He was excellent. Everybody in this movie was excellent. There is a character in this film that I did not expect to be in this film. And I'm not talking about the heavy breather. I'm talking about, uh, um, help me here. C-3PO and R2-D2. Them the face i want to talk about the face the special uh, effects the oh, okay. peter cushing's uh, character moff tarkin yeah um uh when they first show him yeah yeah it's a bit jarring and then there's another character reveal at the end yeah which i d actually didn't approve of everybody else no, kind of liked I, it I, I, I was that, not I, a fan of showing that at the end I, yeah we'll le let's leave let's leave that character as a surprise you, you could probably guess who it is knowing where the story goes but yeah. uh i will tell you there is technology employed in this movie that i did how that i did not expect to be employed um, and it's it, Tron Legacy when they mm -hmm. did it to make um, to make a which call it younger and look like the yeah. young clue or uh, it it was excellent to the point where I was like it, I, you know I had to stare at the screen and be like is that Peter is like that it, somebody that just yeah, looks I, exactly see, like him I, or are you I, like it was I'll fake? I'll be honest with you, I didn't realize that it was CGI. I'm like wow, they really found a ringer. Yeah, for Peter Cushing, um, the the voice was off oh, a little bit. Yeah. But, I, uh, but the face, but you know, yeah. then when somebody said no, it was CGI. I'm like, I was staring at it. Yeah, yeah. it was crazy because it was really well done CGI. Yeah. I think it was really well done, but I could definitely tell. Like, I felt like his mouth movements were definitely weird. Well, that to me. that's where it was the cheeks where I was kind of like, is he like? I, I, yeah, but it made me second it's, guess. But it's it was a great unexpected fun, and it, I want to say the use of that character was like one of my favorite moments in the movie yeah. are between him and um and the other the other guy whose name i cannot remember the general in the white the white uh the one who was in charge of the krellick. death star having it krellick yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um i th you know um anything that you guys like stood out it, it, it we'll, we'll stick to like actor or performance or anything like that to you i'll say forrest whitaker's character saul or whatever his name was i thought 
of any of the things I love this movie I thought it was really really good of anything in the movie yeah. that I, I didn't really think was necessary it's like his character I feel like the story to connect everything together it felt weird could yeah. have been taken out and they could have gotten the point across yeah. without his character being super necessary yes. but, and, but it's Forrest Whitaker <laughs> and he's an amazing actor I yeah he brings he brings something to every role so I, I am going to tell you if you're looking for that moment from the original teaser though where he says you know will you continue to fight what will you become that's not in this movie uh, about 50% of what you see in the trailers and commercials is not actually in the movie um, so that's a little weird. I don't like when movies do that, but, you know, it happens in the process. They tried to show us this movie over a year ago, and the movie wasn't done until two weeks ago, so that's what happens. But um, I do agree. I thought his... I, 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 well, from what I believe, that character, though, Saul, Saul uh, he is actually exists in the animated series of The Clone Wars, so that was the first of them trying to connect universes together. Oh, well, then cool. I, so I appreciated that. Th like, the, his, his character arc was one of the few times where... Um, and I don't know how spoilerly, spoilery. Just you don't guys give the major end. Yeah, yeah, but um, I I am not happy with the way his character arc ended, as far as the I agree. is concerned. Yeah, and I don't think like they did what. I mean, I, I have no idea about him in like previous stuff. I don't but know. Just as far as just this movie with what they set him up as, and then the way the arc it's comes to fruition, yeah. it's anticlimactic, and I don't think it like that was the first time in this movie, and in most. Star Wars movies, it happens like 80 times before the opening credits. Yeah. But that was the first time where I was like, eh, that was, you know. But, but and I will say this, the first mm, act of the movie for me felt a little slow. And I don't, I don't want, I, I'm going to see it again. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to stick to that opinion. I think maybe it was just kind of the like, you've got to shake off The Force Awakens before you go in. And I know we all knew this wasn't going to be The Force Awakens or anything like that. But it, it's the first one of its kind, and for that, I think it's well, actually under more scrutiny than The Force Awakens. Well, I'll tell you, know? You, you know, I enjoyed The Force Awakens. It was great fun. It was, you know, it was an old, but it fun was, is the key word there. This yeah. one's not fun, in a good way, it, not yeah. a bad way. Um, but also, The Force Awakens felt, even though you know J.J. Abrams said it was an homage to the originals, um, it felt like a rehash. Yeah, yeah. It felt like a lot of plot points were borrowed. Nostalgic characters, games, yeah. characters were you know the same but different. Um, this was an entirely original mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. This was a, original characters. They tie in to the universe perfectly. Yeah, they agree. tongue and groove yeah. into the, the the first film brilliantly, but they do it while really establishing just a whole new original story. And that is why I like this one so much better. I agree. I completely agree with that. That that The Force Awakens for sure definitely rode the nostalgia train because they were kind of like, listen, we've got Star Wars. We're going to make it great. You have to trust us, but we know you're not ready. So we're going to bring you on a train that you're familiar with. And now this is the first one where they're like, hey, take a peek over here and look at what we can well, do. It's starting to feel you know? me after seeing this that J.J. Abrams played it safe. Mm -hmm. That there weren't a lot of risks taken. He, he, he used plot points and he used mechanisms that were already established completely in the first film. Mm -hmm. um, and so he played it safe because he didn't want to screw up this you know, multi-billion dollar investment. This one took a real risk. This, this one was risky. This yeah, was yeah. a risk, and it, I think it's a risk that's going to pay off um, opening box off, uh, the projections for box office week, first uh, weekend at the box office, 150 million. I think it's going to do that easily. Oh, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. this is going to be this is going to be the big movie of the year. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, 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 I just want people to know, the, I, and in a good way, this is not The Force Awakens, so you should consider whether this is a, one, a Star Wars movie that you want to take your kid, like little, little kids to, because I have a feel. It, for me, it felt like this was maybe the first adult Star Wars movie, too. And I'm not talking, it was, wasn't vulgar, it wasn't, it wasn't gory, vulgar, it, wasn't... it was just heavy. It was heavy, like mm -hmm. heavier, and I really enjoyed, it there was, was some, emotional, you know? Uh, the, uh, what's the droid that was the comic relief? K, KS, uh, K2? no, K2SO, K2. yeah. He was for fantastic. Me, he's I one think, of the standouts. Yeah, for sure. Alan yeah. Tudyk. Yeah. No question. Yeah. And the uh, blind Buddhist monk ja uh, Jai. I, I, I loved all the auxiliary characters. I really enjoyed them. I loved the way they approached the Force from like a normal person's perspective. Yeah. They you know? approached the Force. Well, I mean, uh, uh, the uh, I, I say blind Buddhist monk Jedi because I don't know. I can't remember his name in the film, but um, he, you know, so much of the concept of the Force is based on. Eastern religion yeah. and Eastern philosophy, and so them using this character who is like this pr force priest, basically, 
Yeah. Um, and I, I thought that was really cool. I thought his character was cool. I thought he was played brilliantly mm-hmm. by the actor who played yeah. him. Um, I, I, I think he may be my favorite Star Wars character ever. It's, it's interesting. There's a lot of really cool messages here about um, kind of you, you, you know, it's not necessarily, this approach is the force, not as maybe a religious thing, but more as like, we all choose who we want to be. You know, you can choose to be brave, you can choose to be good, yeah. you know, and you can choose to have faith in something, yeah. you know. But that's um, one, of, one of the things as a normal person, like who thinks about the force and, you know, like, uh, in the previous movies, you're... Are you saying a, I'm not normal? I am. <laughs> you're a Jedi, right? Um, or you're Like a your father before you. Yeah, yeah, you're good or you're evil. Um, and if you're not one of those two things, the religion's kind of pointless. Yeah, and this was in the middle. Um, if know? I'm just like an average Joe, like I am in the real world, but I'm in Star Wars, you know, universe, um, I want to believe in the Force, and I want to think that there's some point to that. Yeah. This movie kind of expands on that religious aspect to where you can understand why people care about the Force and actually care about that religious or spiritual aspect of it without being, you know, super-powered space wizards. Yeah. You know, just, you know, <laughs> super-powered blind samurais. I think there's some people out there that are going to really appreciate stuff like the crystals that they mentioned. They, they refer, this is the first time in the movies they explain the crystal in the lightsaber. And, and they've never talked about that before, and I had no idea that had something to do with the Death Star. I will say there is a plot point with a necklace, though, that never really pays off. Yeah. Uh, that it was like a MacGuffin, like it didn't really, didn't really get there. Um, uh, I'll say ahead. on yeah. a positive note, I think even though we kind of know what's happening, you know, if you've seen the other Star Wars movies, you kind of know what it's leading mm-hmm. up to. Mm-hmm. But I still felt throughout the movie that I felt anxious, like, what's going to happen? Yeah, exactly. Even though we know. Yeah. I think that's a good testament to a movie like that because, you know, so if we look at episode one, two, and three, we know that Anakin's going to become Darth Vader, spoiler alert. Uh, But, like, you know, so it doesn't... This movie had more of that anxiety than all three of those combined. You know what I mean? Like, and I think this movie is a good example of how when you have a story that you necessarily know broad strokes of, how you can get in there and do minutia, like, like, like the little stuff. Like, like Pete was saying, I really liked how all the characters tied in. And when, you know, the reason why we do or don't know about them is it feels appropriate. It doesn't feel like at the end of episode three where they're like, wipe the droid's mind. And you're like, oh, okay. So that's why R2 and C3PO don't remember you know 30 years of their life that's cool whatever um i think they did that really well um so i just there is one thing i wasn't crazy about in this movie oh and i do have a fun fact for you too so the woman who played grand moff tarkin is that her name no that's the bad guy right Moth 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 yeah she is actually the woman who played her in mm-hmm. episode three but her scene was deleted and so she was never in that movie. But then when they went to go make this movie, they're like, we got to get her. Mm-hmm. And they got her back to do this movie. So she finally got to play that part, you know, 15 years later. So I thought that was really cool. But so this is like a war movie. Um, so Michael Giacchino did the music for this. I personally, um, and, you know, I'm sure I'll feel differently as I see it. Other than like one moment in the movie, I thought the music was only OK. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the John Williams score that you hope for. But- Listen to what you just said. It yeah, wasn't yeah. John Williams. Right. And there's only John Williams. Mm-hmm. Right. But and the, the, the divergence was good, though. Whether whether the quality of the music is exactly what you were expecting, I mean, the fact you, that it wasn't just, here's a here's a cinema score that you remember, here's yeah. another one that you remember. They do do that. They kind of bookend it Well, with I'll it, tell you the issue I had. there's original music. It's it. a specific scene, and it's when she they're all around the table, and she is arguing about, and you've seen it in the trailer, it's the rebellions are built on hope. And they're like, whatever... The music in the background did not match what was going on and to the point where I was like, this is detracting from this scene. Now, I'm going to pull back and explain that this movie was shot by Gareth Edwards. You know, he directed uh, Godzilla and um, he did envision this. He, he is a massive fanboy of Star Wars. He grew up watching those movies and you can feel that in this movie, yeah, sure but he, he did this as a in the trenches war movie. They finished the movie and Disney said... Okay, we might have let you go a little too deep into the scary and, and uh, you know, war aspect of it. So they, that's where they went back to the reshoots. I think the music, and if you really watch the scenes, is part of their attempt to lighten it up mm-hmm. a little bit. Because there are some scenes where I was like, man, if, if you pulled this music out and maybe just didn't have any music or had darker playing music, it would get even, it would feel even a like, little saving Ooh, like too yeah. much. Yeah. And so I thought that was interesting. Like, if you look for those, it's really cool. But... I think there's a testament to how far they went when they made this movie, too, because, as you know from the preview, Vader's in the movie, 
and they went to extensive lengths to make sure that Vader looked like Vader from episode mm -hmm. four. Because for me, I was like, oh, his costume looks a little weird. It's because in A New Hope, his costume's different than in the other ones. But the quality of that film isn't, you know, 4K. It's mm -hmm. not high definition. So we don't see it that same way. And we're used to the later ones. So this one's, he's got the red eyes. Yeah. You know, he's got yeah. the, the gloves were different. Um, but I thought their use of Vader in this movie was incredibly appropriate and mm -hmm. used the right way. It wasn't like... Oh, gosh, that one, you know, I, I think they, it, it, it felt like he was there. It didn't feel like they were tiptoeing around it yeah, necessarily. Yeah, they gave him enough screen time that we got our Vader fix, yeah. but it wasn't a Vader movie. No. Right, yeah. He wasn't a main, he wasn't a main character in yeah. this. <laughs> I thought that was done really well. Um, I thought the whole thing was done really yeah, well. Yeah, their attention to detail in making things like the, the Rebel base look exactly like the base in the other one. Mm -hmm. I read this whole thing where they went in and they found they wanted to use the exact same fabrics for, like, flight suits. They wanted to use the exact same stuff. It felt like yeah, it. And it. It felt like the Rebel base. And it, you not knowing that, that's the first thing you said to me when you walked out of the movie. You were like, for those of us who were around at the beginning, this felt exactly like that. And I think that's a big... Well, you know, you know and that's it. You know, I saw, I saw Star Wars for the first time in... What was it 76 77 in the 77, summer yeah my uh, my father had taken me on a camping trip to niagara falls in toronto and we were in toronto when we went to go see this yes and we are the only people to go camping in toronto <laughs> um but he took me to go see it was the sum that summer so more than any other star wars film that i have seen since then this brought me back to that. Yeah. Emotionally, it connected me to that. It connected me to that experience with my dad. Okay. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I like it so yeah. much. And what I was hearing after the movie and some of the people I was talking to, those of us that were around for the original connected with this in a way that people that weren't didn't. Mm -hmm. You know, those of you that weren't, Except for you. Star Wars hipster. Um, <laughs> the, you know, uh, we're like, yeah, it was good. It was good. Those of us that were around for the, I, we were like, oh my God, that was amazing. Yeah. Because that's how good a job this man did. Yeah. I was there for the first one. And I'm telling you, he really brought it back. So if you're in that, mm -hmm. if you're a woman of a certain age, <laughs> um, you're going to get that seeing this movie. You're going to reconnect. Because it does. There are those elements that just feel like the original. And that is yeah. such high praise for this director. A absolutely. I, you know, it, 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 like I said, it felt like, and I don't mean this in a bad way, it felt like somebody who was, uh, we're being treated to uh, Christmas tunes while we do this too. Uh, and I thought I'd give you a little something. Yeah. <laughs> I, it felt like I was watching, Disney was like, hey, you know what? We're going to make your Star Wars fan film. So it was like somebody who lived, breathed it their whole life, Got the chance. Someone was like, "Here's a bunch of money. Let's make this a canon film, and it's gonna be in you know." Yeah. And, and I look forward to more of those. You yeah. Know? Well, the, uh, one of the things like the, I thought the exact same thing. <clears throat> like this is a Star Wars film that I have actually been waiting for for a couple reasons. And one was I haven't been invested in characters or cared what happened to them in many films. Mm -hmm. But the other was it felt like they stopped pandering just a little bit. There's still a couple scenes yeah. where there's a little bit of a wink and a nod and, I'll hey, agree, look yeah. at this. But um, it wasn't every couple minutes. Yeah. Most of it was focused on, here's a cool story set in the universe you love yeah. instead of, here's a billion toys. It, and I'm sure those will come, but it didn't feel like it was produced just to play off my nostalgia. There's no BB-8 here. My, my, my nostalgia increases the movie, but it, it's not just you, like... You know, you said something yeah. to me the other day before we came here, too, about... Um, you know, it's a giant universe, you know, billions of planets, and it's always about the same three families, you know? Yeah. And so, you, you, you know, there, none of those families are here. So it was kind, yeah. of, it was kind of cool to see it from that perspective. Um, I am going to make a complaint about the R2-D2 C-3PO cameo that was in it. felt like uh, Disney was like, you got to put it in there because they make a cameo on the base. However, mm -hmm. the it's ship... It's a continuity problem. Yeah, because they're supposed to be on Leia's ship with her, and that ship may or may not appear in this film, and you're like... That ship was that just at the base, yeah. and are they? How did they? So it was like, it was it was a point that it like took me out a little bit, and mm -hmm. I was like, ah, I don't like that moment. Yeah, it was, was definitely the, a studio yeah. moment. It was the first know? thing I, I thought when I saw them. I'm like, you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like those those droids have the best contracts in the galaxy yeah. <laughs> because regardless of whether it's appropriate in the movie, they're thrown in, and I visibly like winced when I saw yeah. them. Yeah. And it, but but the thing is, with a lot of Star Wars movies in the past decade or so, um, 
I that happens all the time with yeah. this. It was just a couple moments where that happened, and then you could go on with your enjoyment yeah. of the movie. You know? Yeah, I, I I appreciated a lot. There was some emotional weight to it for sure too. You know, I liked the the personal story they tried to weigh it down with. Uh, I liked the diversity of the film too. You know, that's something to mention that the there was some Hispanic characters in this movie, and we haven't really seen any of that in the Star Wars universe. I, I know someone made some hubbub about it being like another female lead, and Disney was like, "We didn't even, we didn't even think of that. Who cares?" Mm-hmm. They were like, "What's wrong with everyone? What's mm-hmm. wrong with you?" You know. And I think I think that's good reason. I thought she was fantastic. I mean, there's really not. I mean, I I, I praise it very highly. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I look forward to being able to see it again. Now I get an anxiety when it's a new movie that mm-hmm. you're looking forward to. So you have to watch it the once, absorb it, and then watch it again. Yeah. And you know what? We're we're two movies in to Disney's oh, acquisition yeah. of Lucasfilm. And I think it's safe to say now the franchise is in excellent, excellent hands. Yeah, they have. They are really doing. I think. I think they're doing an amazing job. I think they're doing an amazing job with Marvel. I think they're doing an amazing job with this. We're getting great entertainment. We're getting stories that uh, expand a universe we have loved and followed for years, uh, both in Marvel and in uh, in Star Wars. And, and Disney is making boatloads and boatloads of money. Yeah. That's a win-win. Well, know? it's it's great for us because I hope they experiment more like this. You I know, I love the to. episodes, but I I look forward to the Han Solo. I look forward to more of these out there. Maybe a story about the origin, you know, where the Jedi come from. Let's see them in their prime. You know, stuff like that. And well, and so it's it's cool. It's great that this film is going to do well, like we all predict, because it will give I think more freedom to the upcoming films to. You know, Absolutely, yeah. To push it a little bit more and undisneyfy it at that little right. bit. Right, and I'm hoping the studio starts to like pull pull back a little bit more. I understand they're still nervous. It's only the second sure. one out of the gate, but they need to start pulling the claws further and further out and just let people go a little bit, you know. And it's it's working well with Marvel, and it's clearly we're in for some treats here. So, if any, anybody have anything else they wanted to add about the movie that we so made, go overall see rating, it. overall yeah. rating. That's what I want to say. So, I like to do it like Rotten Tomato does it. I give it a percentage or whatever. What do you, uh, so, Charles, percentage? For now, uh, I'm gonna go with 82. Initial. Oh, okay. That was a little lower than I expected you to give it, but yeah. okay. Uh, I guess I'm an easier judge. I was gonna say 87. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna be the effusive. Uh, the effusive one. I'm going to give it a 93. Okay, that's pretty good. I, you know what? And I'm, I'm getting it a little higher marks than I maybe expected. I would sit around 87. I'd say right under 90, somewhere right under 90, and that could potentially change when I see it again. So it's definitely. There's no question. It's a good movie. It's a must. A Star Wars movie is the reason why we have cinema theaters, why we have all that stuff. You go to the movie theater, and now we rent movie theaters to go see it too. So we recommend that way. It's a way. lot less expensive than you think. Yeah. It, I was stunned how inexpensive it was to do this. Yeah, and um, you know, if you're if you're coming to Central Florida, the the people here at the Cinemark and the Artagon, it's these, not that far from Disney. And these guys were wonderful. And it's right across the street from the uh, the outlets, yeah, the Prime outlets uh, on International Drive, which are my favorite outlets. I like them better than Premium down in. Yeah. Uh, it's a little easier to get Vista. around in those ones. Yeah. And it's not as crazy, and they've got great stores. And this is right across the street. Plus, this mall that they're in has a lot of stuff from local artists. I was really, it was kind of cool. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, um, and it's not crowded, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it. So if you're looking for something to do off-site that's a little different, you're going to be over at the outlets, come on over to the Artagon, go check out the Cinemark, um, check out some of these stores. I, I was really impressed with it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if you're, you're going to see the movie, let us know what you think in the comments section. Tweet at us, Diz Pop Show, uh, at the Diz, anywhere. We all want to talk about this movie. We love Star Wars. Um, Facebook, all that, all that jazz. Um, like I said, let us know if you're going to see it, what your opinions were. Disagree, agree, whatever, you know. Or if you hate Star Wars, I guess, get out of here. What are you doing watching this yeah, really. video? But How did you make it to this movie? Yeah. How, how are you still yeah, watching you, right how, now? Oh, uh, how are hello, you still four attractive people mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. the camera. I have... I have thirsty watched quite a few things that are terrible. Uh, so I think that's actually most of my audience has whittled thirsty down to watched. people. So when you, you got to th- you're in the desert, you're parched, and you say, "Girl, you thirsty?" <laughs> I'm fanning myself. As wow. I do, but, but well, there that'll is do it. More yeah. estrogen <laughs> per square inch in this body. <laughs> You'd think I would have any been other person you know. Soybeans all day, but um, yeah. So that'll do it. That that's it, I guess, for the year too. Unless some little things pop up between now and the new year. But uh, thank you for watching. Um, And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye, everybody.